Good morning, ladies. It's Amy here. I am uh, coming to you to talk to you today about anger. Yes, anger. Um, and what is it telling you and how can you deal with it? So I know this is a big issue um, with many moms who are struggling with postpartum depression and anxiety. I'm just going to hop on here and share this video with my lovely group of ladies. Um, and then we will get started with um, chatting about this video. I need to reload this so I can see it here. Um, oh. That's not what I'm trying to do here, ladies. Um, there we go. Um, we want to go. So, anger. Let me know if you're watching the replay. Have you experienced anger? Um, I know most of us have as just human beings, not just women struggling with postpartum depression and anxiety. Um, and I know that it can be very frustrating. I've been there. I get it. I know um, after having my first daughter, it really became aware. I, I, re I really became aware of my anger and how it may be affecting other people. So this is a big, a big issue and it affects us all as human beings. So if you're popping on live, feel free to say hi, let me know how you're doing. Um, so we're talking about anger and what it's telling you and how you can deal with it. Anger is telling you that something's not right. So it's basically a signal that something's not quite going right in your life. Um, it's trying to tell you that something's going on. Um, and changes need to be made in your life. So um, I know right in the heat of the moment, it's not going to really help to know that, but to plan ahead of time and plan for these situations, um, it's good to know that it's just a signal that's saying something's not right, changes need to be made, um, and we need to figure out what's going on. We need to think about it. Why are we being angry? What's the deeper root of the cause? And thinking about it. And I'll give you some tools to work on figuring that out towards the end. Um, so many women are afraid of being angry. As we grow up, we think, um, you know, we're told we're not supposed to be angry. So we suppress that, we suppress that. And what ends, ends up happening is it kind of bottles up and then later on it explodes, right? So it is okay to be angry, right? We need to remind ourselves it's okay um, to have these emotions. It's a natural emotion. And what happens is we always hear of this hormone oxytocin, right? Now, oxytocin is like the love hormone. It's what we are supposed to feel after we have a baby. Um, whether we feel that or not, that's completely normal, completely okay. We're all different. But the thing is, is what can happen with oxytocin is if we aren't supported, if we aren't loved, if we aren't connected um, with, uh, if we don't have that support system that we traditionally had in the past as mothers um, in this kind of baby-centric society, what happens is that hormone can help us protect ourselves, protect our baby. So we go into more of a frustration, anger, rage mode, right? Um, when things aren't quite, um, the way they they could be to support us and that's completely normal so it's completely okay um to be feeling that way and in today's society like i say it's just it's not a very motherly supported space um, so it's very important for us as mothers to plan ahead and create that support system create those plans um, that are going to support us because um we want that oxytocin hormone to work in our favor the way it's designed to work. So we want to have that support and that love around us, that help um, 
and that joy around us as we have our new baby. Um, and I know in today's society, it's it's more of a baby centric society where people are focused on baby and asking about baby and worried about baby. And it's like, well, what about mom? Like, we need support as well. So anger can come out as a result of all that because, um, you know, mom isn't always looked at. So we're not always paid attention to. And so sometimes we can be unaware of our anger. And like I said earlier, it can bottle up and explode somewhere. Um, and that's completely normal. So I've used the example in the past of a wood stove where um, you keep um, a leaky wood stove. So what happens is you fill it up and then it slowly leaks out, the, the smoke leaks out, and it starts to impact people all around us without us being even aware of it, that our anger is seeking out and doing that. Um, seeping out of the wood stove and uh, affecting everybody around us. So um, it's very important to be aware of um, your emotions when they're when they're popping up. Um, and remember that it's okay. Um, and those belief systems that you may have grown up with, where you're not supposed to be angry and stuff, is we need to really look look at those and evaluate those. And I'll give you some tools for that. So with anger, in order to release it, we need to either vocalize it through our voice or we need to um, release it through a form of movement, exercise, some sort of movement, right? So those are the ways to, to express it and, and to get rid of it before it's exploding into something we don't want it to be exploding into. Um, so it's your responsibility to take care of your anger i know this is one that i really had to face a hard reality for is i always like to blame others on why i was angry and what was going on and it's our responsibility to take um charge of our anger and deal with it and figure out what's going on right so um and that's why it's important to seek help seek support figure out ways to to work on our anger and why is it coming up really like and now that and and i'll I can't speak. Analyze what's going on in your life, right? So, because we only know ourselves, nobody else knows what's going on for us. So, um, in order for us to um, seek change, it's important that we do that. Um, so, and as you start to put less energy in towards your anger and you start to put it in other directions, you're going to start feeling happier, more calm, um, and have more energy. I know um, that's a huge, been a huge struggle for me as a new mom and continues to this day as a mom is figuring out where is my energy going? How am, how am I um, continuing to have energy to be able to deal with my toddlers and my, my um, school age children? And, you know, so this is one of the things that we need to do is we need to really be aware of how we are um, dealing with our energy, right? Um, and as we start to feel, find ways to cope with anger, we're going to feel much more energetic um, and see more clearly, make other changes in our lives that are going to be supporting us. Um, so I hope that makes sense and that helps you. If you have any questions, let me know if you're watching live. If you're at watching the replay, feel free to ask any questions. I'd be more than happy to answer any of them. Um, and the other thing is that um, I will give you some tips here. I was just going to see if anybody's asking any questions in my group because I didn't even think to check on that. But um, um, so, anyways, so some tools that you can use. Um, so, anger, the other thing is anger and sadness come kind of hand in hand. So sometimes you may feel really angry and the next thing you know, you're feeling really, really sad and emotional and crying and upset and that's okay. It's important to let those tears flow and let that release because that's another release where we're, we're letting things out. So cry, cry and let yourself cry. It's okay to cry. I know that was another belief system that I grew up with is you don't cry, you know? <laughs> you're weak if you cry. Well, it's okay to cry. We need to let those emotions out sometimes. We're dealing with a lot of big stuff in this world. So let those emotions, let them out. Very important um, to release those emotions. The other thing is walk away. 
So if you have baby with you, put them in a safe place um, where they're going to be okay and safe while you're um, calming down. Walk away. Get out of the situation and take a few minutes to calm down. Go, go in the bathroom, go in another room, wherever you can go. Walk outside if you're in a, a very small space. Walk out the door for a minute. Take some deep breaths and, and get yourself back grounded so that you can deal with the situation more stable and more calm state because um, when we're anger what's ha when we're angry what's happening is our brain is not our brain is not actually registering so a lot of the time we don't even have a memory of what's even going on so we need to get that trigger get ourselves out of the situation as quickly as possible um, so the other thing is exercise so analyze are you exercising are you do you have outlets where you're actually using that physical energy to get it out during your day-to-day -day life if you're not maybe we need to look at that is there you know is that something you can implement in your life hi tash glad you can join me um so exercise make sure you're you know look at that in your life are you implementing that in how is that how does that look for you um funny movies have you been watching anything funny yet lately have you been watching any comedies are those things that you liked beforehand you know can you take a moment to watch a funny movie maybe while you're sitting there nursing baby while you're sitting there um you know can you do something funny you know think of ways to bring that back into your life um now this is very helpful, is writing down those thoughts and feelings. So journaling exercises are always very, very powerful. So writing out your feelings and getting them on paper and what whatever you wanna do with them, if you wanna you know, get rid of them, crumple them up, rip up the paper, ripping up is a good, good sensation to get that um, physical sensation out. So you know, write out your journal. Journaling is just a great exercise. Just in general, you're using your, your hands physically and you're getting those thoughts out onto paper. Um, I love journaling um, and I'm trying to incorporate more and more of that into my day-to-day -day life. I know it can be challenging, especially when you have um, little ones around and finding time to make that work, but whether you can do that after they've gone to bed if you have time. I know sometimes we fall asleep with them, but <laughs> um, maybe during nap time, um, if you wake up a little bit before them. I know I've made an effort. I don't know if you guys noticed. I've made an effort for you guys to hop on these videos early before my girls wake up so that it, I know I have a time that's free um, that I can be here to help you guys. So that you know, that took a little bit of thinking and a little bit of planning to make that happen and me getting out of bed early and planning to go to bed earlier. So sometimes we have to think about those things um, as mothers. So the other thing is um, running around the block a couple times or up and down your stairs. I know I love the stairs in my house. Um, we don't all have stairs in our homes, but I do love them. Um, when I was training for my run, they were very helpful, but also um, just getting that that physical exercise out, getting up and down the stairs. Um, sometimes I'll purposely leave things in the basement, so I have to go up and down the stairs. It's a good way to get in that extra exercise, and you're still doing the things you have to do as a mother. Um, so the other thing, phone a friend, talk to somebody. So do you have somebody trusted that you can talk to and go over all these things? Can you let somebody know you need to chat, get it off your chest? very important again we need to vocalize this we need to get it out by vocalizing or physically be getting it out um and the other thing is positive affirmations so you're a good mom i'm a good mom so tell yourself i'm a good mom um i can handle this in a positive appropriate way okay so Remember those positive affirmations. They're very, very important. You're all beautiful ladies. You're all beautiful women, um, wonderful moms. You're doing the best that you can, and that is what is important. Remind yourself of that, that you are going to deal with this in a positive, appropriate way, okay? Um, so those are my tips. Um, there's a few tips there. There's a lot of stuff. <laughs> so some things may work for you. Other things may not, and that's okay. We're all different. Um, now, if you're watching the replay again, let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you have any comments. Feel free to um, 
reach out and I am here. I'm a support system for you. So reach out anytime and I'd be willing to hop on a call with you and see if working together is going to support you through this. We can get you a plan together um, to help make this a lot easier for you if this is an area where you're struggling because I know I struggled a lot with this and having someone to support me through it, keep me accountable and keep me through the steps. Um, I know I've talked about it before. I did a yell free challenge while my daughter was young and I still have a couple of the signs hanging around my house. Actually, my daughter grabbed it the other day and said, can I stick this to my door? What is this? I said, yeah, go ahead. It just reminds us to not yell and to stay calm and use our tools, right? To deep breathe and think about um, being kind to other people. And it was a good, good learning opportunity for her to see that. So I'm here. I've been there. I'm here to help you ladies. Thank you for this. Thank you, Caitlin, for joining me. And I'm very glad you could join me. And again, if you guys have any questions and if you want to hop on a call, feel free, send me a message anytime. I'm here for you ladies. And this is what I'm passionate about. So if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling like you're in a rut, I'm here. And believe me, I get it. And I've been there. So I love you guys and I will talk to you later and um, we will see you on Thursday on my next, uh, next video. Bye-bye.